Hi everyone, welcome to a brand new episode of Marcus. Today we're looking at NVIDIA, ticker symbol NVDA. We'll cover the income statement, balance sheet, cash flow, key figures, our key feature, and the technical aspect of the stock. Should we be buying the stock right now? Let's find out. NVIDIA started with the aim to help solve the most challenging computational problems and their journey began by focusing on PC graphics and have since extended their business which now covers four markets which are uh, gaming, professional visualization, data centers and automotive. As of end of last year, NVIDIA had over 18,000 employees in 29 countries and more than 13,000 were engaged in research development and more than 5,000 were engaged in sales, marketing, operation and administrative position and the business operates in a highly competitive market which is characterized by rapid technological change and evolving industry standards. Some of the competitive factors are performance, access to customers, partners, distribution channel, software support and manufacturing capabilities just to mention a few and NVIDIA's key strategy that shape their overall business approach include advancing the accelerated computing platform, extending their technology and platform leadership in AI, visual computing, leveraging their intellectual property, and advancing the leading autonomous vehicle platform. And with that said, let's look at the numbers. If we go down to the screen, we can see that NVIDIA is traded on NASDAQ and are in the manufacturing sector. Their market capitalization coming in at $550 billion and their revenue is coming in at $26.9 billion. P ratio coming in at 57. Now, guys, I like companies with a P ratio of 20 or below. So having 57, that is just way too high for me. So that is a no. But when you see a stock with a high P ratio, that tells you that the market expectation is high. And therefore, there is a good chance that you might see capital gains on those stocks because there's a lot of investors that is pushing the price higher because they are expecting even better numbers. But the overhanging risk here is that if the company Company doesn't meet those expectations we will see the stock price fall as we saw with PayPal and and and, and uh uh, Netflix. So, but on the other hand, when you see a stock with a low P ratio, that tells you that the market expectation of that stock is low, and therefore you might not see capital gains on those stock. But having a P ratio at 57, that is too high for me. Pro uh, profit margin coming in at 36%. I like this one because I like uh, companies with a profit margin of 15% or higher. So coming in at 36%, I like it. So that is a goal for me. Price to sales ratio coming in at 20 now normally i like companies with a price to sales ratio of maximum four so having 20 that is just way too high for me so that is a no the price to book value coming in at 22.9 normally i like companies with a price to book value of maximum three so 22.9 that is just way too high for me so that is a no if we were to summarize, PE ratio is too high, price to sales ratio is too high, and price to book value is too high. This tells me that Nvidia at its current state is overvalued. So they pay out a dividend of 16 cents per share. I like it because I like those dividend income. E effect return at 0.07%, that is just way too low for me. So this is a no. I would like to see a, a range between 2.53% at least, but there are stocks out there that has a much higher effective return. But at the same time, guys, I want you should be uh, uh, cautious here because it could be a trap when you see a stock with a high effective return. You might have good return as long as you own those stock. But the, the, the risk is that if you look at the history, the chart, you might not see capital gains on those stock. Meaning when it comes time for you to exit those stock, you might not get a higher price than what you bought it for. Just keep that in mind. So effective return at 0.07%, that is too low. Return on equity coming in at 44.8%. I like it because return on equity tells you about a company's ability to create a return on their equity, meaning that it's uh, their ability to create a return on the capital you bought to invest in them so seeing that they have 44.8 percent i like it so that is a goal return on asset coming in at 17 percent 
I like it. So that is a go. So the, the stock is currently traded at $221 per share. If you go down to the moving average, we can see that we are below the 50 day moving average, but also below the 200 day moving average. This indicator is telling us that we might see the stock price decline. If we take a quick uh, glance at the chart, we can see that we have been moving within a positive trend channel for quite some time, but has of lately seen lower, lower uh, levels and seeing that this stock is now moving within a negative trend trend channel but we'll take a closer look at the technical aspect of the stock further down but let's jump over to the income statement and what we can see here on the income statement is that the total revenue went from 6.9 billion dollars in 2017 up to 16.5 billion dollars in 2021 and the numbers have been growing steadily every year we fell off in 2020 but overall trend is positive i like this gross profit went from 4.5 one billion dollars up to 10.4 billion dollars same thing here the numbers have been growing and we fell off in 2020 but overall trend is positive that is a plus i like that net income went from 1.7 billion dollars up to 4.3 billion dollars same thing here the numbers have been improving but in 2020 we fell off a bit but overall trend is positive i like it now let's jump over to the balance sheet and what we're interested in here is that the current assets versus the current liabilities. And we can see that there's a huge difference between the current assets and the current liabilities, which is a plus, I like it. But we can also see that it's greater than their total liabilities, which is a plus, I like it. Imagine uh, being able to pay off your student loan, your car payment, your mortgage, your uh, consumer debt, everything, and still have capital left on the table this is major this is a plus i like it now the total liabilities went from four billion dollars up to 11.9 billion dollars and the number have been growing every year and we can see a huge difference between 2020 and 2021 i would like to see them start reducing their total liabilities even though your your current assets is greater than total liabilities you shouldn't be carried away so i would like to see them start reducing the total liabilities so that is negative Outstanding share went from 585 million shares up to 620 million shares and the numbers have been growing for the last five years this is negative so what's happening here is when you see these numbers grow that meaning that there are more and more available shares out there meaning that your share of the company is decreasing you're being diluted as investor and when you see these numbers fall that means that the company is doing buybacks meaning that there are fewer and fewer available shares meaning that your share of the company is is growing and there's a lot of investor that either skip this part or doesn't know about it because they be looking at a company's balance sheet and they see a company for instance with a strong balance sheet they have a lot of assets and the debt is not growing that much but on the other hand we can see that the company issuing more and more share which is negative because that's a way for a company to bring in more capital without taking on more debt so keep an eye on the outstanding shares and then seeing that these numbers are growing that is negative now let's jump over to the cash flow and what we're interested in here is that the operating cash flow versus the capital expenditure and we can see that in 2021 uh, operating cash flow came in at 5.8 billion dollars and the capital expenditure at 1.1 billion dollars making it a difference of 4.7 billion dollars which is a plus and we can see that the operating cash flow went from 1.7 billion dollars up to 5.8 and these numbers have been growing steadily every year i like that capital expenditure went from 593 million and the numbers have improved they reduced their investments in 2020 uh, but overall trend is positive i like it i like the fact that the operating cash flow is growing also that they continue to invest in the business which is a plus now let's jump over to the key figures and what we're interested here is that the, uh, what we can see here is that the earnings per share went from 2.8 dollars per share up to 6.9 dollars per share and the numbers have been improving we fell off in 2020 but overall trend is positive revenue per share went from 11.8 dollars per share up to 26.6 dollars per share and the, these numbers have been improving every year that is a plus we fell off in 2020 but overall trend positive 
equity per share went from $9.8 per share up to $27 per share and these numbers have been improving every year that is a plus I like it dividend per share went from 45 cents up to 64 cents and this number has also been growing steadily every year that is a plus I like it because I like those recurrent income but also the fact that the income is growing every year so that is a plus I like that dividend per share uh, a bit of fluctuation we have have seen 15.6 percent 11 8 13 and 9 i like it because i like a company that pays out less than 60 percent because i want uh, some of that capital to remain in the business for investment acquisitions or just strengthening the business overall strengthening business but we could see at least that they pay out above 20 percent that would be a plus right now they're paying out a, a bit low number i think they could increase it to at least 20 percent Gross margin went from 58.8% up to 63% and these numbers have been growing steadily every year. I like it. I like the fact that they are becoming more and more efficient and seeing that the uh, cost of goods sold is decreasing. This is a plus. I like that. But we also need to compare these numbers across the industry and see how NVIDIA is doing compared to their competitors operating margin went from 27.5 percent uh, uh, down to 26.7 percent we, we we improved a couple of years but has for the last two years seen lower numbers could this be a counter trend forming uh, so this is negative but overall these are great numbers but overall trend here we're seeing a counter trend therefore i gave them a minus Profit margin went from 24% up to 26%. And the, we can see the same thing here. We've seen the number improve for a couple of years, but for the last two years, we've seen lower numbers. So this is negative. As I mentioned before, these are great numbers and they are above 15%, which is a plus. But uh, the overall uh, trend, we, we are maybe seeing a kind of trend forming. So therefore, a minus. Return on equity went from 28.9% down to 25.6%. Same thing here, we have seen uh, uh, improvement, uh, improvement for a couple of years, then have saw, seen a lower numbers. So this is negative. Return on uh, assets went from 16.9% down to 15%. And same thing here, we improved a couple of years, but have lately seen a negative number. So this is negative, uh, a lower numbers, so this is negative. Solidity tells you about a company's financial strength for the long term. And here we can see we went from 58 5 percent up to 58.6 percent and same thing the numbers have been improving every year and we fell off in 2021 but overall trend is positive i like that balance sheet liquidity same thing as solidity but here it looks at the uh, company's financial strength for the short term and we can see we went from 16.4 down to 1.7 and the, these numbers have been falling we they improved it uh, improved it a bit but overall trend is negative this is I don't like that at all. Debt ratio, we can see uh, looking at the five year period unchanged from 2017 up to 2021. But also, I like the fact that these numbers have been falling uh, for a couple of years. So, this is a plus, but uh, but that they are back on the this number we started, that is a minus. Basically, debt ratio tells you that in 2021, 0 0.7 means that they had 0 0.7 times more debt than equity in the business so guys we have gone through the income statement balance sheet cash flow key figures and now over to our key features which is the stock analyzer and what the stock analyzer does is that it gives you a simplified holistic overview of the company's performance if you want to dig through the numbers you can dig through the numbers or have the software do the heavy lifting for you if we take a quick glance on the, uh, on the screen we can see that the pe ratio Sorry about that. P ratio is above 20, which is negative. They pay out a dividend, which is a plus, and the dividend payout share is less than 60%. That is a plus, and dividend increased over the past five years. That is a plus, and the numbers of outstanding shares have increased. That is negative. Revenue uh, increased over the past five years. That is a plus. Profit margin above 15%. That is a plus, and profit increased over the past five years. That is a plus. Current assets is greater than current liabilities. That is a plus. Solidity increased over the past five years 
year. That is a plus. Balance sheet liquidity decreased over the past five years, negative, and debt equity ratio increased over the past five years, negative, and total liabilities have grown for the past five years, negative. Guys, as you can tell, it gives you a simplified, holistic overview of the company's performance, and it saves you a lot of time. If you want to dig through the numbers, you can dig through the numbers or have the software do the heavy lifting for you. And you can have this software along with everything we've gone through, plus access to our discussion forum where you'll be able to chat with me alongside with other members for only $10 per month. So make sure to head over to commerce.se and become a member today. Okay, thank you. But now let's jump over to the technical aspect of the stock. So here we have the chart. Let me begin by uh, just laying down the support line, something like that. Let me change that color to green. Let me do one more for the resistance line, something like that. And let me change that color to red and uh, see something else. Let me see here something like that let me change that color okay guys as you can tell we have been moving within a positive trend channel for quite some time and we saw here in october aggressive uh, buy, buying and it broke the uh, channel and uh, the price really grew a bit moved aggressively before hitting a, a, a ceiling here and then the price came back down but what to watch out for is that this support line didn't hold a weak support line so the price broke back within the channel and here we can see something interesting if we go back a bit you can see that these support line have held its position for quite some time indicating that these are a strong support line also saying that these are key areas to watch out for as you can tell the price went down a bit before the buyers came back and pushed the price even higher before reaching a ceiling re the resistance level and then came back down here so we can see also a lot of fluctuation going on so indicating that there are uncertainty here uh, the, uh, the investor don't know whether we'll continue to move up or if the price will break below and continue to move towards these areas around here if we were to move around here then i know there is a lot of investor that will enter the stock and buy because this is a strong company that has a lot of potential and a lot of good things going on plus you saw the numbers they are moving forward and the the uh, the, the current assets in even greater than their total liabilities that is just amazing and i love the work they're doing with the autonomous platform and the ai and the data center and the uh, the, the, the graphics card so uh, this company is something to invest in i will invest in this company and i'll like to invest and hold it for a couple of years and what i can tell see here is that this position this key area have held so there is a good chance that we might see the stock price move back within the uh, move within this channel if we uh, if i were to trade the stock as a tr uh, trader then I w I w we could see a, a price move of uh, at least 25 to 30 percent that is okay that is a good trade but for me um, i would hold this stock for a qu couple of years and it would be nice if we saw the price go down towards this level then i know this is a strong buy and also that would improve my uh, margin of safety because uh, the closer we go down to these support levels because there's a lot of buyers here that then there's a good chance that the buyers come back in and push the price here but buying over here we could either go up or we could fall so if we were to buy here then you have to have a larger uh, uh, safety of margin but overall trend i'm positive so that's how we would do it. so that's how i would trade the stock how would you trade the stock please let me know in the comment section below and also let me know if you have any questions or have stocks you want me to take a look at and as always please do your own analysis thank you so much for watching i truly hope uh, you have enjoyed this episode and please give me a thumbs up comment subscribe and until next time guys take care bye bye